Hi, and welcome to the Learn Kubernetes with Google series. My name is Laura, and I'm a software engineer at Google working on managed multi-cluster in GKE. So today, I want to show you something that MCS is really useful for, and that is for blue-green upgrades. So a blue-green upgrade is when you take your current production version of your software, so let's say that's this blue one here, and then you make a complete second copy of your software that has all the upgrades you want installed. So that's you know this green one over here. And then you move your traffic over from all going into the blue copy to instead being going into this shiny new green copy. And then when it's all moved over, we can actually go ahead and shut down this blue one. So this way you have the least amount of downtime and it's also less risky as you aren't upgrading that one version of your app in place. So you can even wait to move your traffic over to test out your green copy on your own so that you know that it's really a good version. And for people running their applications on Kubernetes, there's basically two kinds of upgrades they need to be worried about, upgrades to their own application, but also upgrades to Kubernetes itself. So there's new releases of Kubernetes all the time, uh, three minor version bumps a year. And in fact, they just recently finished releasing 123 and they're working on version 124 right now. Sometimes upgrading those version bumps can seem really scary, uh, depending on the nature of the changes to Kubernetes and then also how much infrastructure you have built up around your upgrade process. So what we're gonna to do today is take a cluster that is on Kubernetes version 1.19 with our app on it, the blue one. And then we're gonna make another cluster that is on Kubernetes version 1.23 that also has our app running on it. And we're going to use the MCS API to effortlessly act as this load balancer between them as we turn up our new app on the 123 cluster and turn down our old app on the 119 cluster. So I'm going to show you my setup first. So let me switch to my terminal. All right, so I'm going to list out my clusters. You'll see I have two here. One of them is on one. 19, right? So that's my old cluster, my blue cluster. And then I have this uh, second one that's on 123, right? Version 123. So that's going to be my new cluster. And I'm going to show you that for my first cluster, GK1, um, I have this learn Kubernetes with Google namespace in here. I'm going to get everything that's deployed in here already because this has my app running already. We're pretending that my blue cluster here, my GK1 cluster is prod right now. So I'm using this demo application called Where Am I uh, that responds with some cute JSON that has some metadata about where that response came from. And one nice thing about this Where Am I demo application is that it can chain calls to other uh, deployments of itself. Um, and it will respond to a request from the front end uh, version of it. Uh, where any backend calls to backend versions of it came from. So you can see here on GK1, I have a deployment of where am I backend, a deployment of where am I front end, I have some services, you know, the other stuff that, that goes into it. But that's basically my application running on prod um, on my uh, blue crust cluster that's running uh, Kubernetes version 119. So I'm going to kind of copy and paste a really long uh, sort of awk thing here just to grab this endpoint. Um, and this is the endpoint for um, the external load balancer in front of my front end, uh, where am I uh, deployment. And you'll see that when I curl this, if I curl it right, you'll see that when I curl this endpoint, uh, we get this uh, type of output. So this is like that kind of cute JSON that I was talking about. I'm going to kind of scroll up here so you'll see that this JSON has sort of like these two stanzas. There's this sort of outer part and then this nested um, JSON uh, with the key backend result. So uh, down here, uh, this first part um, is what is coming from the front end. And this back part is what that front end received from its back end. So there's a little chain here where we curled the endpoint for this front end. So this is the information from the front end pod. It says it's on the cluster GK1, the pod that we actually contacted has this art emoji. And then uh, the backend that it contacted, the where am I backend that it contacted is also hosted on GK1. It's a pod that has this heart uh, love pod name emoji here. Um, 
So let's take a quick look now that we know what that looks like, um, how my app is configured right now, because there's something important that I want to point out uh, regarding this cluster, which is that it's already using MCS. So the way um, we uh, configure the Where Am I application with the config map um, it has this name. It's in my Learn Kubernetes with Google namespace, and I'm going to output into JSON. So this is what's uh, the config map for config map for GK1, and looks uh, kind of uh, busy right now. But the part that I want to highlight is here. There's this backend service uh, setting, which is currently set to uh, this um, DNS, where am I dash backend dot LKWG, that's my namespace, dot SVC dot cluster set dot local. So here, this backend service configured for my front end, uh, where am I uh, deployment is configured to be the DNS name that has cluster set dot local at the end. This means that this DNS name will resolve to any pod that is part of the multi-cluster service named where am I dash backend in the namespace LKWG. So right now, I just have this one cluster, GK1, exporting the service basically to itself. Um, but this is important setup here because to uh, make it a multi-cluster service instead of just a regular service, from the beginning, I need to configure my application to use multi-cluster DNS in the first place. So I'm going to switch back to my slides really quick. So the reason for this is that I can export these backends from any other cluster in the cluster set, and this DNS name will work for those backends. So in my case, this is because I'm going to start with my backends in my blue cluster, like I have this right now. But then I'm also going to deploy them in my green cluster. And then I'm going to start to move my traffic over by draining off the pods in this blue cluster. And then eventually, this DNS name is only going to resolve to pods, to backends that are in the green cluster, um, because that's the only place that they're exported from. OK, so let's actually do it. Going back to my terminal. All right, one more time, just remind us, we've got two clusters, GK1 on version 119, that's our old one, GK2 on version 123, that's the new one we want to switch to. All right, so let's deploy the backend service over in our new cluster, including the service export. So the way I'm going to do this is in my second cluster, I want to apply, oops, sorry, apply. Um, I have this customize overlay, and I want to put it in the Learn Kubernetes with Google namespace. So we'll do that. And uh, again, we're deploying, as we can see here, all the stuff related to the back end um, where am I deployment, including the service export. So we're going to be exporting those back ends from our GKE2 cluster um, as a multi-cluster service, um, and they'll be accessible as for, with the GK1 backends for as long as both of those exist, right? So uh, we can just do a quick uh, check uh, on GK2. Let's get everybody um, in the Learn Kubernetes with Google uh, namespace, and we'll see that we have some stuff in here. Again, I just deployed the Where Am I backend, and the Where Am I backend pods are there, and the Where Am I backend service, et cetera. OK, so back to let's curl that endpoint. So again, this endpoint is that I've set, this environment variable endpoint that I set, that is for the load balancer in front of GKE1 in front of our old cluster. OK, let's start curling this endpoint. So we're going to start out getting our backend responses from GK1. But at some point, we're going to start getting them from GK2. So we're going to start getting responses back from either the backends in GK1 in our old cluster or the backends in GK2, which is our new cluster. So we're just going to run this a couple times until uh, we see that GK2 is uh, has come up and is accessible. OK, so uh, there we go. We've started getting some responses back from our second cluster. So I'm going to scroll up here so we can see it all, all the way here. Our second cluster is uh, the host for the backend pod that is actually being uh, contacted for uh, by the front end um, to uh, responding to that where am I backend learn Kubernetes with google.svc.clusterset.local.dns. Um, so it has this uh, biohazard emoji, it uh, looks like. So we can keep doing this a couple time and times, and you'll see we'll get back pods that have emojis that we recognize from GK1. Uh, sometimes, but then we'll get pods that are from GK2 instead, like this massage person. Um, and the same uh, hazardous emoji here, one in GK2. 
Okay, so now that you believe me, right, that we have a backend deployed in our old cluster and in our new cluster, and our front end is contacting either one at random because uh, the DNS can route to either of them, uh, let's um, actually drain off the old cluster, right? So I'm going to do that. Let me clear this off a little bit. Um, over in GK1, right? I'm going to just I'm going to scale my deployment called Where Am I Backend. And I'm going to have it have zero replicas, right? So there won't be any more backends left over there in the learn Kubernetes with Google um, namespace. And uh, we can take a quick look at what's up with those deployments, right? And see that we don't have any more backends. Again, in GKA1, we've drained off all of the backends there. And then now let's go back to curling that endpoint, right? So we'll see now that we only see emojis uh, from uh, GK2, right? So we've got this hazardous one and I'm expecting um, our massage guy to show up at some point. Um, so uh, yeah, we can see that we're getting this, the uh, backends only from that one cluster. So um, now all of our backend traffic is going to our new cluster that's on 123. Um, and that's how we can just move that traffic over uh, easily. So this example was just with pure MCS, uh, but enterprising viewers may be wondering, how are we going to get that front end over there to the green cluster so we can shut down the whole blue cluster to get it all, all over to the new cluster so we can shut down the old cluster entirely? So as you know, MCS is just about pod to pod traffic within the cluster set. Um, but balancing external traffic coming in to multiple clusters is kind of another thing. Um, and that's actually the job of this other uh, thing called the gateway API. And you can do that with multi-cluster gateways. So this is an MCS series, but to quickly show you um, this recipe here um, on the uh, Google Cloud Platform GK Networking Recipes repo, um, shows a multi-step process of using multi-cluster gateway API where traffic is in, external traffic is drained from an ingress route on our first cluster, on our blue cluster, and to traffic, to traffic mirroring on the blue and the green cluster, and then incrementally more and more ingress traffic on the green cluster until finally every all of the traffic is going to our new green cluster and the blue cluster can be shut down. So you should definitely check it out if you're interested. Uh, the MCS recipe for this video is also on this repo. Um, and if you stick around to the next episode, I will have time to show you some MCS plus MCG action uh, for sure. And there you have it, blue-green upgrades with multi-cluster services. That's it for this one. Thank you for joining me for Learn Kubernetes with Google. And check out the next episode on this topic, multi-cluster services API application segmentation.